Please let me see it. Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate the presence of our well wishers and we want to welcome you officially to the 56th inaugural lecture series of the Ladoki at Kipola University of Technology of Bumosho. This morning, our topic will be circular economy, chances, choices, and consequences. It will be delivered by Professor Ladi Pupo, Olao Sidikon, Ogunleye. At this point, Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite the representative of the registrar, Barista Adebayo Adem, to the podium to invite the Vice Chancellor to read the citation of the lecturer and declare the lecture open. You're welcome, sir. As this program progresses, it is my delight to invite the act acting vice chancellor to the podium to read the citation of the Nigeria lecturer, Professor Oladipo Lausebika Ogunleye, and declare this 56th inaugural lecture series open. The vice chancellor, sir.
Ola di Kuko, Ola Oshibi Kan Ogunle, was born to the family of Ba, J.F. and Mrs. F.G. Ogunle in the Laon Ogun, Oshun State, in April 1974. He attended local authority Bode Primary School, in Laon Ogun, in Laon Ogun Grammar School, in Laon Ogun, Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Ogumosho, where he earned his Bachelor of Technology degree in Chemical Engineering in 1997, and the University of Ibadan, where he obtained both MSc and PhD in Industrial Engineering, respectively, in 20, 2001 and 2009. He started his career as a graduate assistant in the Department of Chemical Engineering of this university in 1999, and became a professor of process system engineering in the department of chemical engineering in 2015. He was at different times, departmental examination officer, member board of pre-degree science, faculty representative of board of postgraduate school, acting head of department of chemical engineering, acting director of tech research and consultancy services, chairman business committee of the university congregation, Chairman Welfare Committee of Lautech Branch of Academic Staff Union of Universities. He is currently Dean Postgraduate School of Ladoke Akintola University of Technology. Well, so Oladipo Gunlaye has more than 100 publications to his credit. He has successfully supervised six PhD theses, 16 master's degree dissertation and over 300 bachelor's degree student project. He was either an external examiner to postgraduate and undergraduate studies or professorial assessors to Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife, Federal University of Technology, Minam, Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, University of Lagos, Akoka, Amadu Bello University, Zaria, Landmark University, Umara, Convenant University, Ota, Lagos State University, Ojo, Abubakar Tafawa Balewa University, Bauchi, Adamawa State University, Mobi, Afe Babalola University, Adwekiti, Delta State University, Abraka, University of Ilorin, Ilorin, and Landmark University, Umara. Also, he has taught at various levels as a visiting professor at the University of Ilorin and Landmark University, Omar. He has also variously served as member or chairman of National Universities Commission's accreditation panels to eight universities in Nigeria. Furthermore, he was the Nigerian representative at the Organization for Prohibition of Chemical Weapon, OPCW, Association Program in 2014 at AIG, the Netherlands. Professor Ogunleye is a registered engineer with Koren, member of the Society for, of Chemical Engineers in Nigeria, Nigerian Institute of Industrial Engineers, Environmental and Behavioral Association of Nigeria, American Institute of Chemical Engineers, and associate member of the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. He is married to Professor Kende Yewande Ogunleye, and the marriage is blessed with children. I hereby invite Professor Ladipo Laoshebikan Ogunleye to deliver his lecture as I declare the 56th inaugural lecture of Ladoke Akintola University of Technology of Bumashon. Open. Thank you. The Acting Vice Chancellor, sir, other principal officers of the university, chairman committee of provost and deans, provost of colleges, Dean Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Deans of other faculties and student affairs, 
members of the University Senate, acting head of Department of Chemical Engineering, members of the university congregation and other members of staff, distinguished invited guests, great Ladokites, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, it is a popular saying that knowledge is not a finished good. And this gives credence to the existence and relevance of a university in any society. The university is an important institution where the framework that runs the rest of the institution within such societies are largely formed through teaching, research, and community service. Through community service, the university not only produces graduates who contribute to the advancement of the society in terms of the economic, but also professionals therein who by their ideas and engagement help create a more cohesive and forward-looking society. One of such fora of communities engagement of a university is the inaugural lecture that has for long been considered as a confluence of learning for heterogeneous professional interests. This 56th inaugural lecture being held today, 14th December 2023, is a signature of community's love for learning and celebration of academic excellence. Therefore, I am grateful to God for this opportunity to present a record of my research activity of over 24 years at this 56th inaugural lecture. It is the second in the Department of Chemical Engineering and the 16th in the Faculty of Engineering and Technology. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, God in his creative wisdom, according to Genesis chapter one, verse 29 to 31 says, and I quote from New Living Translation of the Bible. He said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant through the heart and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as food for all wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurried along the ground, everything that has life. And that was what happened. Then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. These scriptural assertions typifies the environment as a complicated web of ecosystem that rely on one another and human activities have significantly impact on its health and well-being. In relying on nature for survival and well-being, human actions often have unintended and harmful consequences on the environment which have equally led to so many grievous consequences. No wonder Sir Isaac Newton in his third law of motion postulated that whenever one object exerts a force on another object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. Advancing human civilization is constantly changing the entropy of the environment. In the long historical period of development of human society, due to small population and low social productivity, waste was not enough to be a problem. With the arrival of industrial civilized society, social productivity have been improved on rapidly. The process of industrialization and urbanization has been accelerated and population increased, resulting in a large number of industrial waste and unbound living waste. Waste is the end of the chain of science, technology, industry, products, and pollution. The environment cannot absorb this waste, which have become important pollutants that damage the urban landscape and pollute the environment. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, about testing noted that one cannot solve problems by thinking the same way that one created them. It then means that environmental management must shift from unsustainable industrial civilization to ecological civilization. The goal of the paradigm shift in fundamental approach to environmental governance is to create benign interaction between the government, industry, and consumers to shift the conflicting relationship between the environment and development into mutually beneficial one, to transform development and to achieve modernization 
in which man and nature live in harmony and shared prosperity globally. All over the world today, sir, ecological civilization is widely adopted as an important concept of comprehensive construction of a prosperous society, while the circular economy is an effective way to construct the ecological civilization. For instance, China being one of the most industrialized countries of the world, has officially accepted the circular economy as a new development strategy to achieve the goal of constructing an environmentally friendly and resource-saving society. The European Union Commission also adopted the circular economy action, which focuses on normalizing sustainable products in the European Union to better manage our resources sector, reduce waste, and contribute global contribute to global circular economic standard. Other international standard organizations are also following in the role. The circular economy seeks to keep resources in use for as long as possible to extract value from them while they are in use and to recover and regenerate products and material at the end of each service life. As such, the circular economy focuses on recycling, limiting, and reusing, physical, reusing the physical input of the economy and using waste as a resource, leading to reduce primary resources consumption. In a circular economy, product and material are kept in circulation through processes such as maintenance, reuse, refurbishment, remanufacture, recycling, and composting. The circular economy is based on three principles. Eliminate waste and pollution, circulate products and materials, and regenerate nature. Designing a circular economy involves a multidisciplinary approach where process and material engineering achieve. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Complexity characterizes product development management because of the number of functions, subsystems, components, and related interfaces usually involved. Thus, circular economy is complex with respect to diversity of the ecosystem, veracity of available engineering options, and viability of products. Hence, the choice of the title of today's inaugural lecture to unravel this complexity called circular economy, chances, choices, and consequences. The circular economy. The circular economy concept is based on the cradle to cradle framework, unlike the linear economy, which is driven from cradle to grief. GOSH 2020 defines circular economy as a, sub, as a system level approach to economic development and a paradigm shift from the traditional concept of linear economic model of extract, produce, consume, dispose, and deplete to an elevated echelon of achieving zero waste by resource conservation. This is achieved through chain concept of design of production process and material selection for higher life cycle, conservation of all kinds of resources, material and or energy recovery all through the process. And, it's, and at the end of the life of the cycle of a specific use of a product, it will still be fit to be utilized as an input material to a new production process in the value chain. The main phases of circular economic model are illustrated in figure one as being projected there. The circular economy, therefore, reverses to an industrial economy that is restorative by intention. It aims to rely on renewable energy, minimizing, tracking, and eliminating the use of toxic chemicals while also eradicating waste through careful design. The implementation of circular economy is specifically based on both resource efficiency and eco-efficiency. And its purpose is to achieve a set of measures to move towards a more circular, green, and sustainable economy the chances available. Millennium Development Goal, MDG, signed by 149 country leaders in September 2000, 
was widened in September 2015 and transformed into what is called Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, with a broader set of goals across the economy, social, and environmental dimension. This reflects in 17 goals and 169 targets. The Sustainable Development Goals form the framework for improving the lives of population around the world and mitigating the hazardous man-made effects of climate change. Recently, sir, the circular economy has evolved as a framework to bridge the idealism of SDG with the practicality of business strategies, replacing the linear to make use and lose economic model with strategies to retain values through cascading of regenerative practices. A circular economy is definitely helping in the implementation of the SDG 2030 in the world. Its practices and related business model can help achieve several of the SDG targets, offering humanity the chances of sustainable development as enumerated in table one above. The choices. The circular economy is out to decouple economic growth from resource use and its associated environmental impacts. In identified potent strategies for decoupling modes, Eli Makato Foundation conceptualized circular economy broadly on the nature of material circulation flow, linking it with three R principles, that is reduce, reuse, and recycle. Eurovia et al. in 2023 employed content analysis to categorize circular economy principles into four. Beside the initial three R groups of principle, an additional group called logistic, reverse logistics has been introduced. This group covers such circular economic principles as deposit system for returning of packaging or the platform based on new business model providing take back and resell possibilities for used products or their packaging. Thus, the general four choices option in the circular economy are reduce, reuse, recycle, and reverse logistics, making them four R. The model of the four circular economic principle and their various activities involved is as presented on figure two, the consequences. Numerous consequences of circular economy adoption in many industrialized nations have been elucidated by various researchers, mainly in terms of its benefits to the society. Shenem et al. 2019, however, grouped these benefits of the circular economy into environmental, economic, and social benefits as depicted on figure three. Economic consequences include increased productivity with resource efficiency, reduce production costs and improve competitiveness, new business activities and models that stimulate innovation, boost economic growth and create jobs, new market and investment opportunities, enhance consumer loyalty, reduce resource scarcity, and better protection against resource price fluctuation. And finally, therein, reduce raw material dependency. Eco environmental consequences include reduce environmental impacts, reduce emission of greenhouse gases and pollutants, reduce pollution and end of life waste, higher quality of ecosystem services, preservation of natural resources, both land, water, and materials, then safeguarding the biodiversity. Social consequences include improve well-being, new job and income, improve health and working condition of people, improve health of animals and plants, new partnership and collaboration among companies and societies, innovation and technology, making them life easier. My contribution to circular economic research. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, and their distinguished audience, my over 24 years of academic voyage in Lautech, another institution 
have been characterized mainly by an anchor with two flukes, having many pins to use the allegory of a marine transport system. My area of specialization in chemical engineering is process system engineering. My with specific focus on process optimization and product development. These two flukes of my research, anchor, are important drivers of circular economy, as alluded to by Limu et al. in 2020. My personal research activities and team research efforts, including student thesis supervision, are well structured within circular economic concepts with fast industrial applications. Figure four illustrates the specific classification of the research activity in graphical form. Among these four principles of circular economy, I have severally adopted two, that is reuse and reduce. In this research focus and the research findings are hereby presented in this section. The first section is the reduced choices that I have made. The fundamental driving force of the reduced principle in circular economy is process optimization. Largely, my research output in this area can be classified into the following principles. Optimization to reduce usage of raw materials, replacement with natural resources, replacement to renewables, and route tracking. First set, raw material mix optimization. First example is the silicon oil reduction. Ogula et al. in 2006 adopted the chemical variance method to evaluate the optimum silicon oil quantity required in flexible polyethylene foam production in contrast to the conventional practice of one part of silicon oil to 100 parts of polyol for synthesis of a medium density polyurethane foam. The results showed that the quality of foam produced remained the same as the quantity of silicon oil was gradually reduced from one part to 0.76 part per 100 part of polyol. Thus, the latter ratio was obtained as the optimum quantity required for the foam production, which is about 24% reduction, but still maintaining the same quality. The implication of this is for every 100,000 cost price, there is a reduction of 24,000 naira. The properties of the foam produced are highlighted in table two and table three. Castor oil as surfactants. Again, a study was made on the effect of substituting castor oil for silicon oil on the properties polyether based flexible polyurethane foam. Incorporating castor oil significantly increased the density of the foam and retaining the standard ISO requirements. This also resulted in a cost ranging between 6% and 13% cost, meaning for every 100,000 invested, there is a saving of between 6,000 and 13,000 naira. The properties of the foam produced are as presented in table four separable mathematical programming model. Further studies on flexible polyurethane foam production by Oguleye 2009, Oguleye Anoyawale 2011, Oguleye Anoyawale 2012 was separable mathematical programming model for selecting optimal raw material mix for flexible polyurethane foam production. A graphical user interface computer program of the procedure was developed in Boland Devi programming language as depicted in figure 5A and 5B. It was validated using the practical problem from the SEC specifications and product in the industry. The validated results were optimal, both in quantity and in property, and they all comply to the ISO standard. The associated cost reduction also ranged between 13% and 20%. Meaning for every 100,000 100, Naira invested, there is a saving of 13,000 and 20,000 respectively. Other properties of the foam produced as depicted in table five, while some samples of the foam produced is presented on plate one. Solid rocket motor propellant gate design. A mathematical programming approach for selecting the optimal chemical mix and geometry that minimizes the instability 
of a solid rocket motor combustion process was developed. Selecting the optimal chemical mix with appropriate geometry to minimize oscillatory pressure instability is a challenge in the space research. The optimum mix was determined, the standard requirements were met, and the oscillatory pressure was minimized. And the best geometry fund was bait geometry, as reported by Ogulaye et al, 2015. The other properties emanating from this research is as presented on table six. The consequences of optimal raw material mix. Based on the castor oil and separable mathematical programming studies, Systematic reduction in raw material mix results in a significant reduction in the production cost, translating to more profits. They also establish the extent of the use of alternative raw materials for the expensive ones. These operations can also minimize the time to failure of equipment and the adverse effect of waste generation on the environment. Thus, if the chemical process industry will remain competitive in the scarce resources era in the industrial world and maintain a healthy environment, optimal usage of resources is key through the reduced principle of the circular economy. Second group of research, process route tracking and optimization, exergy analysis of processes. In today's world of energy sensitivity, environmental concern and nose diving economy, this study illustrated the potential usefulness of exergy analysis in solving energy-related environmental problems and in reducing the cost of operating and designing process, ultimately leading to sustainable development as depicted on table seven and table eight as developed by Oshiolale and Ogunleye in 2009. Minimizing crevice corrosion in type 304 of stainless steel Ogule et al. in 2016 studied the effect of chloride concentration, crevice scaling factor, immersion time on the percentage area and maximum depth of attack of type 304 stainless steel in chloride corrosion environments as prevalent in the chemical industry. The study yielded the minimum percentage area of attack of 5.63% as against 27% that is prevalent, and the maximum depth of attack of 3.32 times 10 raised to power minus seven millimeter at the optimum condition. This is depicted on plate two. Extraction process optimization, Jatropa Kakos oil extraction. Nonlinear programming model of Soviet extraction of Jatropa Kakos oil were formed and sought. The nonlinear program yields a maximum yield of 37.35 as against the prevalent 27.2% with an acceptable property for bad diesel production at the optimum condition. This study demonstrates the applicability of nonlinear mathematical programming in selecting extraction condition for jato power oil from its seed as put forward by Ogule and Anilita in 2012. Name seed oil extraction. This method was further expanded using a central composite design consisting of three factors and five levels for solvent extraction of neem oil from its seed for production of disinfectants. The maximum percentage yield was 48, 43.48% at the solvent composition of 80.77 N exchange and other condition as stated by Adewo Yanugunle in 2012. Limeseed oil extraction. The optimal process parameter for the extraction of limeseed oil for fragrance production were determined using Bosbenken design of response service methodology. The oil produced was analyzed using GCMS. A maximum of 29.21% of limeseed oil yield was obtained with suitable physicochemical characteristics for fragrance production as put forward by Adeniyi et al, 2018, where I was a co-author. Bar remediation process optimization, weathered bunny light crude remediation. Agari and Ogulaya in 2012A studied 
was designed to evaluate the effect of bar stimulation and bar augmentation amendment of agents like MPK fertilizer, twin 80, and mixed culture on the bar remediation of tropical soil sample artificially contaminated in weathered bunny light food oil, an optimum of 84.88% remediation was achieved in this study. Balfour production optimization. Ogula Yato in 2016 investigates the effect of coal substrates and inoculum, as well as other process parameters on the biomethane production. The results showed that poor digestion of animal waste with fruit waste and inoculum increased biomethane yield and reduced the startup time for biomethane generation as compared with animal waste alone, as shown on figure seven. The objective of our et in 2016, where I was a co-author, was to compare the use of wet and dry waste as substrates for anaerobic digestion and its effect on biogas yield. The results showed that the biogas yield using dry substrates comparatively gave a better biogas yield than wet substrates. Pyrolysis of coconut shell. Pyrolysis of coconut shell for maximum yield of bar oil in a fixed bar reactor was investigated in Ogula Eto 2014. The maximum bar yield was 47% at the maximum optimum condition, which is a landmark achievement on the conventional results. Consequences of all these processes. Processes that are well understood, organized, and carefully documented form the foundation for continuous improvement. Its benefits include increased and improved product quality, reduced energy consumption and waste generation, and improved process safety. This consequently leads to cost saving and increased profitability. Another set of research, green corrosion inhibition and optimization. Mangifera indica peel, that is mango, was evaluated as a corrosion inhibitor for mice steel in hydrochloric acid medium using graphometric method and depth of attack technique as shown on figure eight. The maximum inhibition efficiency obtained were 95.75%, 95.76% using the graphometric method and depth of attack method as put forward by Ogule Eto in 2018. One good news here was that the depth of attack was developed by my research group in 2016, and that has been adopted internationally as a method of evaluation. The inhibitive potential of Mondia white root extract, popularly known as Ishirigo in Yoruba language, on the corrosion of mice tea was also evaluated in an hydrochloric medium. Using the weight loss and depth of attack method as well as surface analysis. A maximum corrosion inhibition efficiency of 89.47% was obtained at the optimal condition as put forward by Ogule et al, 2019. The corrosion inhibition of Luva cylindrical leaf extract, the one popularly called Kenkeayaba in Yoruba language, was investigated using the same set of method. The optimum inhibition efficiency obtained was 87.89%, while the kinetics follow the pseudo second order, the Adoption followed the Langmore isotherm, and this is a landmark achievement as compared with other results previously obtained. Consequences of this group of research. Green inhibitors are environmentally benign, non-toxic, but degradable, ecologically acceptable, and renewable, and they are in low cost. Their valorization expand possible application industrially, thereby creating jobs and industrial symbiosis in the perspective of circular economy. The second group of my principle adopted the reuse choices. 
My research output in this area can be classified into the following principle, recovery and utilization of materials and functionalization of biomaterials. Product recovery and utilization. The first one there is cleansing of diesel oil with some chemicals for domestic cooking. My study in Okela Neto 1999 examined the physicochemical properties of the mixture of diesel with trona, diesel with alum, and diesel with sodium hydroxide as a substitute for kerosene. Some significant differences were observed between the properties of the treated diesel and pure diesel. The mixture produced no smoky flame when used in contrast to the pure diesel. This property of diesel mixture were also compared to that of kerosene standard. Recovery of base oil from the used engine lubricating oil. In our study, Okela Neto 2003, we examined the means of recycling engine oil back to the feedstock of hydrocarbon liquid for lubricating oil formulation. The physicochemical properties of the recycled oil were within the acceptable limits and compare favorably with that of virgin based oil. Consequences. Reusing this product will slow down the use of natural resources, habitat disruption and pollution, and help to limit biodiversity losses. Consequently, it contributes to the reduction of total annual greenhouse gas emission and other criteria here pollutants. Adsorption with green biomaterials. Adsorption has been identified as one of the effective methods widely used in water and water wastewater system among many chemical and physical methods due to its flexibility of design and operation, non-generation of toxic substances, and ease of recovery of adsorbents after the application. I have carried out several reports, reported researches in the usage of biomass to treat wastewater, either in its raw activated form or its activated carbon form. These have been targeted as sustainable water availability in quality and in quantity. Some of these research outputs are hereby enumerated. Agari et al. in 2013 used modified spent tea leaves for adsorption of naphthalene. The adsorption capacity developed was 23.81 milligram per gram and percentage removal was 98.2%. Ogula et al. in 2014 B used banana stock activated carbon on the recovery of lead iron. 200 milligram per gram adsorption capacity was attained and 97.9% recovery was made. Agari and Ogulay in 2015A used watermelon peel on naphthalene again with 270.2 milligram per gram adsorption capacity and 98.45% removal. Adewa Yeto in 2021 developed a multi war carbon nanotube, the one in nanotechnology science. So for the absorption of total organic carbon, the maximum adsorption capacity was 259.6 milligram per gram and 93.6% recovery was made. And Ikola Neto 2022, where I was a co-author, also formulated the coconut shell activated carbon for absorption of three drugs in water. They are ibuprofen, ketrophene, and neproxene with respective adsorption capacity 84.5, 80.2, and 88.2 milligrams per gram. And the removal percentage are 98.2, 96.7, and 97.8. The consequences of this group of research is that the reduce, this reduces the economic and environmental costs related to establishing new water supply in development of a circular water economy. There are many benefits of the industrial water reuse and recycling, which include reduce fresh water costs, increase operational efficiency, reduce wastewater flows, reduce costs through industrial symbiosis, and increase production capacity due to the increased availability of clean water. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my conclusion. Sir, the course of this lecture has been an attempt to underscore the necessity of processing 
in batting products. Matthew chapter 12, verse 13 reads, and I quote from New Living Translation of the Bible. A tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. Whatever you sow is what you reap. Nothing in itself is bad unless and until no appropriate investment is made to bring out the worth out of its worthlessness. This is the old story of circular economy. Sustainability of natural resources is a big challenge in our world today. Increasing population coupled with the attendant industrial activities are threatening the world health and the environment. Environmental governance must shift from unsustainable industrial civilization to ecological civilization. It has been made clear from this lecture that the world has an ample chance to make informed choices that will drive the decoupling of economic goods from the resource use and its associated environmental impact. The key all over the world is the circular economy, where chemical processes are perfectly designed and regulated in a closed loop for restorative and sustainable product life cycle. Rethinking the economy model into a circular economy, aiming at zero waste and zero pollution, provide numerous advantages for the health and the economic and the environment in terms of job opportunity, materials cost saving, and biodiversity. The transformation has to be thought at the design stage in order to replace the pollution and waste, preserve the value over time, and avoid using non-renewable resources. It is with the commitment of all stakeholders at the stage of the value chain that the existing solution will be able to be scaled up. Finally, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, life always provides chances that precipitate choices, which in turn bad consequences. Every new opportunity to make choices is a recipe for hope and positive changes. Irrespective of the event of the past, the future always offers hope and opportunity for betterment when choices are deliberately made. Therefore, circular economy is the now and the future. Recommendation. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. While the circular economy holds numerous benefits to the economy and the environment of a nation, certain strategies are deemed necessary for actualizing its full potential. And based on this, I therefore make the following recommendations. One. Nigeria government should launch an educational initiative to embed principles of circular economy in relevant curricula. There should be establishment of an independent unit in government to drive circular economy across interest groups and policies. Three, to support the transition to a more circular economy, the government should launch initiative distributed on strengthening enterprise as a driving force for circular transition, support circular economy, through data and digitization, promote circular economy through design and encourage change of consumption pattern through circular economy and then create proper functioning markets for waste and recycled raw material. Acknowledgements. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I am not self-made, but a product of grace and goodwill. Therefore, I am most grateful to the Almighty and the unknowing God for upholding and propelling me by His grace to attain all what I am today, despite all hurt in life. Indeed, I am what I am by His grace. To my parents, late Pa Joseph Folorusha, and my mother, Mrs. Folor Mrs. Florence, who is here? Mama, please stand up. You can see that, man. They happen to be my first teacher and later sacrifice their pleasure to procure for me a future. I am eternally grateful for all your sacrifices and legacies. Padele and late Mrs. Esther Jeleye, Baba, please stand up. That is my father-in-law. Mama has also gone. You can see that, sir. You are indeed a pillar of support, and I thank you for encouragement and prayer. I have been brought up by many teachers, and this explains the multifaceted nature of my person. 
My deepest appreciation goes to my PhD supervisor, who is currently recovering from a sickness. That's Professor Festus Adekunle Oyawale and his wife for jointly giving me tremendous help, inspiration, and guidance during some dark moment of life. I acknowledge late engineer Sola Deji, my MSc degree supervisor, as well as duo of Dr. Luatoni Okelana and Professor M. Olabe Miwo for cutting my research teeth in 1997. All my teachers, both at primary and secondary school, are well acknowledged and appreciated. Mrs. Yabu Ajayi is here and Mrs. Awurati, they were my teachers in the secondary school. God bless you, ma. At this juncture, I want to appreciate the university management under the able leadership of our pragmatic active vice chancellor, Professor Rum Kalilu, Dr. Kayo Deogule, the university registrar who has been with me from the beginning, Mr. Yomiri Okedeji, the university bossa, Dr. Mrs. Modupe Aboyade, the University Librarian, for their all round support. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present this 56th inaugural lecture. I want to appreciate the following past vice chancellors of this university who had at one time or the other made decisions concerning me that culminate in what is being celebrated today. They include Professor Lucia Gwoke, late Professor Akiola Salau, late Professor Teslim Raji, Professor Benjamin Nadeleke. Professor Adeni Ibadegesi, Professor Michael Lulogude, and late Professor Laide Liasu. Many of my teachers in chemical engineering family will have been excited to be here today, but have transited to the other side of eternity. I greatly appreciate them. They include late Professor John Nedewo, Professor Samuel Faseso, late Professor J. Soji Adeinka, late Professor Bamidele Solomon, and late Professor Stephen K. Lyoko. I am eternally grateful to those who are alive to witness today. Here I have Professor Suleiman A. Karim, the immediate past vice chancellor of University of Illinois State. Is there a gap? Please stand up. I also have here Professor David Oguniyi, who is also here. We have Professor K. R. Onifade. Engineer Laleke Latin War, Professor J. T. J. Afolabi, please stand up wherever you are. Dr. Ebe Lolu Arotiowa, Professor Funshu Akere Dolu, Professor Jide Shonibare, Professor Modeli Eleta, where are you, ma? They all taught me at my undergraduate level. Professor Dada Hararomi is also here. I strongly acknowledge these fathers that have continually stood by me over the years. Reverend Emmanuel Babajide Lucas, Professor Jeremiah Oludele Ojediro, the Vice Chancellor of Belts University, Ota. Professor M. Adeko Jawaid is also here, is the past Deputy Vice Chancellor from FUNAB. Professor O. Yicha Sawaba, Professor Ayode Joluleye, and Professor John Olajide. I thank the Dean of Faculty of Engineering, Professor Luashe S. Oladejo, all the past Dean of the Faculty. The acting head of the Department of Chemical Engineering, Dr. Ayobami Ajani, another department head of the Department in Faculty of Engineering. I appreciate all the professors and all other staff in the Faculty of Engineering for your encouragement over the years. My special thanks goes to the members of staff of the Department of Chemical Engineering as listed above. I appreciate all of you. God bless you real good. I also appreciate the support I have received over the years from the members of academic staff, from the Department of Chemical Engineering, Obafemi Aulawa University. They are all here. The University of Ilorin, they are also well represented there, and Landmark University, Umwara. I have had contact with several life molders here in LaTeX, whose face and memory will not allow me to mention entirely. However, I would like to acknowledge some representatives. I have Professor Idowu Adetuji, Bade Oyediro, Today, Fawale, Lukman Somano, Ezekiel Ayodele, Antonia Falabi, Ade Yinka Odusi, Yinka Adewoye, Banji Oyegoke, Jonathan Adewoye, Jacob Adewale, Bambo Somu Iwa, His Imperial Majesty, Oba John Akitola Alakwa Ofa Kiyakpa, Ayo Ola Dosu, Ola Yinka Olabode, Gani Yukola Wale, Beatrice Adewomawaye, Akim Rahim, Elijah Omidiora, Mary Ola Dipo, 
Abiola Idowu. I also acknowledge this set of people. Mrs. CEO Oshudino, Mrs. AA Obutude, Mrs. VM Olojede, Mr. VS Ayodele, Mr. AP Akabi, Mr. BO Ishola, and Mrs. AO Akiyode. Let me specifically express my gratitude to the board members, management, and staff of postgraduate school, Laute, for your support. Thank you for all your support. My part in life has crossed so many indelible tracks that have given meaning to my life existence. They are destiny helpers who have lifted me severally in life. They are Professor Temiso and Dr. Adefunke Ebijua. I call him my boss and my mentor. Professor Abiodun Oladipo, our dear patron. Professor Adi Adejumo, Professor Biodun Olanira, our IPC, Professor Edward Ayodele, Professor Lawale Olakulein, Pastor Depo and Professor Esther Okwade, all members of LaTeX Alumni Association, especially the Alpha Set, I appreciate you. I appreciate Class 91 from Ila Grammar School. Thank you for who you are. I am most sincerely grateful to all my research group members that have propelled me to this seat. Professor S.C. Agari, Ambali Abdukarim, Tafik Salahuddin, Aki Molatude Arikwola, Jima Tijani, Olusha Yagbede, Fumilayo Oshualale, Fumilayo Awonoti, Ungozi Owaba, Solomon Oluyemi, and George Adeniyi. I appreciate all of you. My former and current research student are highly appreciated, led by my first PhD student, Dr. Ahmed Jima, and all others. I appreciate you. God bless you for who you are. I have been blessed with many wonderful friends and body bearers right from the beginning at LaTeX as a student. They include Professor Adelani and Dr. Adekemi Babanide, Professor Luke Rede and Dr. Fumila Yoshualale, Professor Lubenga and Dr. Yero Kebelu, Professor Lakule and Dr. Lubu Miojoawo, Professor Taufik Adedosu, Professor Musbao Assis, Dr. Peter Alamu, Dr. Lusha Yamane, Dr. Adeola Falabi, Reverend Dr. Benjamin and Reverend Mrs. Omalola, I am grateful to the leadership and the entire members of LaTeX ASU branch for giving me hope, me hope in this challenging career. I appreciate you. God bless you. I acknowledge the guidance and support of Ilan Ragu Council of Professors under the able leadership of Professor Tudi Ajiboye. I sincerely appreciate the pastorate and members of First Baptist Church Ilan Ragu, Fiti Baptist Church Obomasho, and Ore of Yolua Baptist Church Obomasho, you have always provided spiritual nourishment to me as well as platform for Christian ministry. Latte Baptist Student Fellowship Alumni Association, I recognize you. My special gratitude goes to the entire members of the organizing committee of this 56th inaugural lecture, ably led by Dr. Akim Anikwola, Olubumi Ojoawo, Abiola Ajayi Oba, Olukerede Oshualale, Fumilayo Oshualale, Benjamin Dada, Tony Abeguni, Grace Ogunlaki, Fumilayo Oshualale, Milayo Awonoti, Wumi Alawode, Grace Babanide, Fumi Abioye, Tayi Ojo, George Adeniyi, Tony Adeshiko, Shuka Mi Adeoye, Olusha Yagbede, Titi Layo Alamu, and Olatu De Ajani. God bless you for your wonderful work. To all my uncles and neighbors who have shaped me in one way or the other, you are all celebrated today. I have Professor Bola Gote and Dr. Lubumi Ojewola, Professor Lulaki and Mrs. Eniota Adeshino, Dr. George and Mrs. Oluye Misi Owolabi, Mr. and Mrs. Shegwon Adewole, Professor Labamiji, and Mrs. Fumilayo Babalola, the Vice Chancellor of Bowen University, is somewhere seated there. You are welcome. Thank you. God bless you. Prince Abiola and Mrs. Bimbo Abimbola, Professor S. Adiajayi and his wife, they were my hosts during my MSc program. Professor Lufemi and Mrs. Bisola Awo today, Professor Adedako and late Mrs. Abose Diakande, Mr. and Mrs. Adegbe Ngaji Besin and Mr. Ayotude and Dr. Kende Akambi. There are also many aburos that have invested sacrificially in my person. Among whom are Mr. Adegbe Nga and Dr. Titi Lokwe Adeyanju, Mr. Lufi Sayo and Wuro Lai Bitoye, Fam Benga and Fam Temitokpe Adefala, Engineer Tolu Lokwe Ojewola, Tobi Loba Ojewola, Mr. and Mrs. Ronke Amuda, Dr. Adeola and Bolaji Akeni Made, Engineer Jibola Olabi, Fam Bisola Olabi, Dr. Bola Hoolabi, and engineer Oludari of Paleye. To the Ojeleyes and Oluleye and Eweke Danasi, I am eternally grateful for whom you are and all you do. Specifically, I say big thanks to Dr. Ademola and Mrs. Bola Ojeleye, late Professor Kweyemi, the one we call Iroko, and Mrs. Yemisi Ajewole, Reverend Dr. Kayode and Yemisi Oluleye, 
Engineer Benga, Mrs. Tony Falano, Dr. Tolua, Mrs. Kike Loma, Eweke. I have been endowed with great and large siblings that have been supportive, sacrificial, and believing over the years. I appreciate my eldest brother, Dr. Olayinka and Dr. Ades Shola Obuleye. Is our Olori Ebi? Where are you, sir? Please stand up. God bless you. Dr. Akilabi and Dr. Laide Obuleye, Pastor Israel and Mrs. Oluyemi Obutokun, Mrs. Mr. Idowu and Olamide Olusoya, Mr. Babawale and Mrs. Blessing Obuleye, Professor Adeda Kwan Tayojo, Dr. Luwashen and Mrs. Bolaji Akiyemi, Engineer Babajide and Mrs. Eniola Ojeleye, Dr. Tude and Mrs. Tolu Lope Adebo Wale, Mr. Ezekiah and Mrs. Yemi Okunlade, my children. Ola Oluwa Olufemi, stand up. And in Ni Oluwa, Ni Oluwa, stand up. You have been most supportive. I'm grateful to God for giving you as a a gift to my family. It is my prayer for you that my end of achievement in life will be your beginning. To my most active constraints in the optimization of life issues that have always resulted in optimal results, I am most grateful. She is the wife of my youth, ever loving an enduring virtuous woman. Professor Ken Deye Wande Ogulaye, please stand up. I appreciate your support over the years. Finally, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Unto God the mother, invisible and the only wise God, who has made me what I am by his grace. Be all the glory forever and ever. Thank you. I formally acknowledge the presence of the former Deputy Vice Chancellor of Best University, the immediate past Vice Chancellor, the University of Illinois, and the current Vice Chancellor, uh, Bowen University of the Baptist Convention. Provost of Colleges, Deans of Faculty, Deans of Students. Erudite professors and members of Senate, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare the 56th inaugural lecture of this university closed.
Christ is coming. Christ is coming. 